Somebody sent us entries to death. Music. They yeah. Made, they made an intro song. How was it? It was good. Yeah. It was solid. I, I need to listen to it more. Should we use it for one of our episodes? Uh, maybe we should. I think it was pretty good. Okay. Awesome. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of King of the Courts. Uh, we are your hosts, Tyler and Jimmy, over here. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling, Jimmy? Jimmy was a little bit under the weather the other day, and so... Dude, I... Listen, Vegas was hard on me. He for a guy that doesn't that doesn't drink or yeah. party, Vegas was still hard on him. Yeah, me. he was not ready for Vegas. He was out for the next few days. It was rough, but we're back. We are back. We're feeling good. Yep. Real um, quick. Yeah. If you guys have not yet seen Skylight our, Asylum, by the way, that's who made the music. All right, we'll check it out. If you guys have not yet seen our last episode, there were there were a little bit of audio issues. However, yeah. it was a great episode with Drew Brees. Um, who, Unbelievable. Who is he? I mean, he's a Super Bowl MVP, and we got to interview him at the, like, right outside the Super Bowl. So it was a lot of fun. Um, the audio was a little bit bad, but forgive us for that. But it was fun. Um, I mean, this is a big time, big time celebrity athlete. Yeah. Um, achieved a lot in his career, and we were able to sit down and talk with him for quite a bit. Shout out the Pickler for yep. setting that up for us. Yep. Um, the event was amazing. Yep. The, Frugs, is it called Frugs? Frugs. Frugs was insane. Yeah. I mean, it was a super cool event. How many celebrities did we see there? I mean, if you want, if you count like all of Vegas, like when we were, we, we were running the celebrities left and right, which was really cool. Yeah. I mean, we we saw, I mean, just to that event, I mean, Drew Brees came, RG3 came, Delaney Walker, former Titans tight end, who's a freaking beast. He's Man, a- I felt so out of the water talking to Drew. Because you guys were talking all this football lingo, and <laughs> I do not know the players. I know the game a little bit, but I did not recognize hardly any of the players that he was talking about. Dude, he, he, that dude. Luckily, you were there, too. No, he's so chill. So, he's, I mean, after he retired, you probably don't know this, but right after he retired, he actually became an announcer, went uh-huh. to the booth, and he called games for a year and then decided that, you know, he, it was like, just as much work and travel as playing, Mm -hmm. you know? And so he kind of just did it for a year and then he was like, okay, I'm good. And went and spent some time, decided to spend time with his family. But the dude's a pro. Yeah, super cool guy. Yeah, there's nothing that was gonna trip him up. Yeah. Anyways, Uh, um, thank you to The Pickler for setting that interview up. And also, they are the title sponsor of this show, of King of the Court, so thank you for that. Go check them out, they have uh, multiple Indoor pickleball locations all across the country. They're opening their next one in Chicago, I believe. Yeah, um, Naperville in March. Yeah, March, mid-March, I believe. Yeah. So I'm hoping to get out to that one. I don't know if you're coming out or not, but I would love to get out to Chicago. Yeah, they said Chicago. They said 32 by the end of this year. By the end of this year, the next year is just going to go Dude, they're up crazy. To 200, they told me they're up to 259. Yeah. Location signed. Yeah. So if you guys are interested in getting it's yourself cool. a franchise, owning a business, and being a part of a pickleball community. If you're community, interested, you better do it now yeah. because they are filling up fast. Yeah. Go check them out and also told them that KOTC sent you. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that was a fun uh, little recap of Vegas. It's crazy where pickleball has taken us. Dude, Vegas, I mean, think about this. So Drew Brees, obviously. I mean, we went to the win that night mm-hmm. and Johnny Manziel and... Matt Liner, Dr. J was just kicking it, walking around. David Portnoy was there. Yeah, Dave Portnoy. And so we're walking through, here's a, here's a fun story, walking through the wind, mm-hmm. happened to run into AJ Kohler. Uh-huh. So we're kicking it with AJ. So AJ, AJ is good friends with my buddy Brandon, uh-huh. who's the one that got me into pickleball. And so AJ happened to be in Vegas, called Brandon, Brandon called me, and we ended up hooking up. But we're in, we're walking through the wind, and Jeannie Bouchard's there. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course, your partner. She was looking for me. Yeah, clearly. And AJ walks up to Jeannie, mm-hmm. and he's like, hey, do you play pickleball? Mm-hmm. And she has no idea who he is. Yeah. Literally, like, she's never seen him in her life, even though the pro pickleball... Big pickle's going to yeah, censor this and make the, us cut this out. No, the pro pickleball scene is not very big, but... So AJ being AJ is like, hey, you play pickleball? And she's like, ah, and she kind of was like, nah, not really. You know, she kind of like half laughs and he's like are you gonna be in mesa and she like she she clearly didn't know who aj was and then it was like 
She's like, why is this guy asking me about pickleball? I'm sure she doesn't get a lot of pickleball questions. And so she's almost not blowing him off, but she wasn't going to give him anything. Yeah. And then later, George sees her and asks her if she's going to be in Mesa. Uh huh. And she's like, it's my birthday weekend. I'm not playing. Yeah. I'm not playing Mesa. It's my birthday weekend. <laughs> Who wants to play pickleball on their yeah. birthday weekend? And so we kind of laughed about it. We're like, of course she's not. And then we find out like two days later, PPA is like, no, you're playing. You're actually like, playing. Like you're contractually obligated. You got to get your 20 events in. Yeah. So one. No more tendonitis. Yeah. No more tendonitis when you're, and then you go and play the Dallas Open right after. But so yeah, so we ran into Jeannie. She didn't know anybody. She's clearly not a pickleball fan. Yeah. Um, and poor AJ, he wasn't getting an inch with Jeannie. Yeah. So that that was kind of funny. Yeah, freaking Dave Portnoy, George was fanboying over. Oh my gosh, we were at U2. We yeah. were at U2 and he got a text that Dave Portnoy was there. He got up and left, he left. immediately. He left the concert. He left the concert to go find Dave Portnoy. Yeah, he left and he freaking ran over there and then he missed him. And then he missed him, but then 30 minutes later, he, he run, found He him. happens yeah. to run into him. Yeah, he literally left. Oh, by the way, U2. Uh-huh. Incredible. Yeah. The sphere. Like, I, I don't even like U2. <laughs> I don't care about U2. I mean, I could have watched. Honestly, it didn't matter who was there, but yeah. the sphere, if you ever get a chance to go, is worth every penny. I should have brought my goggles with me. Dude, that your goggles were, trip. yeah. I mean, I'm sure someone was there with their goggles. Yeah. But the sphere is insane venue. I can't wait till I play a pickleball match in the sphere. Okay, awesome. Um, also, another reminder, sorry, this is a longer intro, if you want to call it that. Oh, yeah, um, we have a Discord that is... I think we're up to close to 500 people or so. Yeah, the there. Discord is hopping. Um, come join the Discord. Me and Jimmy will hop in there every once in a while. Um, we talk all things pickleball. Yeah. And so, yeah, if you want to join it, feel free to join. And that's also where we get a lot of our questions from for the show. Um, the Discord channel information will also be in the link below or in the description below. Okay, um, next up we have Pickleball Central. They are your one-stop shop for everything. Use code KOTC. It does not... It is not specific to one brand or anything like that. You can use it for almost all the items on their website. Go check them out at pickleballcentral.com. Yeah, use our code. Um, it's been getting used a lot. Yeah. Yeah, check it out. I mean, Pickleball Central, like we said, they have everything imaginable on there. Yeah. Also, we're gonna be doing a giveaway. Can we hint at the giveaway? Uh, no, we need to get our ducks in a row because there's still a couple other things we gotta get ironed out first. But this giveaway. We'll be doing a giveaway with Pickleball Central. And a paddle brand. Yeah, and a paddle brand. Yeah. Six paddles. Yeah. Oh, autographed. Wow. Yeah. By... I don't even know who it, who they're autographed you know? by. I do. Well, I know the company, but I don't know who it is. Am I allowed to say? I, I would hold off. Okay. I love I loved doing things I'm not supposed to. Exactly. All but, right, Jimmy. So uh, uh, give us the latest MLP, PPA, oh, gosh. merger updates. And it's funny because the hype guys... They made a little reel. You can hype guy. By the way, they, we ran into Canton. I don't know which one that is. If that's Dragon or Nighthawk or I don't even know. But they made what, a little reel and they went through maybe Vegas. two or three episodes of the show and they essentially cut up where Jimmy says the merger is going yeah. to happen. The merger is going to happen. It's the wild. It's going to happen in three days and five days tomorrow. It, it's it's unbelievable. So here's the here's the deal with the merger. Okay, this is the most fluid situation ever. And so what we know and what could change from yesterday to today to tomorrow could change in five minutes. Mm -hmm. What we know right now, okay, is that they actually have the final docs, <laughs> which is insane. But that means nothing. That means nothing at this point. Mm -hmm. There's still three or four things that they are trying to get ironed out. One of them is duper. That's supposedly the biggest holdup right now. It, it is. There's also some governance issues, like who's gonna, who is in charge of what. Like, can Dundon and PPA cancel MLP events if they feel like they're not profitable? Vice versa. Like, who, who's running the whole show? Mm -hmm. So there's still some issues there. There's a couple issues about signing players and paying players. Like, are they gonna retro pay players? Are they gonna start, you know, March and then start paying players because. That, that whole thing is a mess. Um, but it seems like most of the big issues have been ironed out and we just have like little things that they're, they're working through. Mm -hmm. But that, that means nothing, honestly. Yeah. The, the reality is, is MLP, PPA, I mean, 
I'm going to put this more on MLP right now because because PPA is running events. Mm-hmm. MLP has botched this. Yeah, they've completely botched it. You've lost all momentum. You've lost all favor with the fans, and people have freaking merger fatigue right now. Yeah, they give zero shits. Like they're over it, mm-hmm. and it's like they don't care anymore. I remember when baseball went on strike. Like I think it was '94 when NBA had their lockout. Fans leave, mm-hmm. and a lot of fans don't come back. Mm-hmm. Well, those are huge sports with millions and millions of fans where pickleball is not. It's a sport in its infancy. Fans are going to leave mm-hmm. and they're not going to come back. And unfortunately, MLP has kind of botched this. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know what's going to happen. Like, is anybody going to care? Like if MLP puts on an event June 1st, for instance, mm-hmm. who's coming? Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know if people are going to get pumped up for it again. Or if they've kind of screwed this up so bad that nobody cares anymore. Yes, but there's a big side to this. And real quick, I want to give you and kind of the show a shout out. I was talking to a player at the last tournament and he came up to me and said, I really appreciate what you guys are doing. And he said he gets 95% of his information about what is going on through our show, which is hilarious because he's an MLP player. Well, I, <laughs> I, I won't mention names, but there's somebody who works for MLP, Uh who should know everything there is to know about what's going on. And they told me they could get their information. But I just think it's hilarious because this is literally a signed MLP player and he's getting his information through us, through the show, through you. But that's on MLP and PPA. Like, let's have some transparency. At least keep these guys up to date. Like, you can't shoot out an email every week. Right now, it's like complete silence. Yeah. Right, and, it, and it's silence on, on both sides, and I actually know for a fact that PPA sent some, some, a term sheet over and some docs over, and then didn't hear from MLP for a week, like dead silence. Mm-hmm. Like, it's weird to me. Yeah. I don't know, they give them the cold shoulder? Like, what, what is Yeah, happening? and then what I was getting at before I cut myself off is, I mean, you can kind of nonchalantly kind of put MLP to the side, but... That's MLP, but you're also neglecting, forgetting about the entire players that signed with them, the 80% of players that signed with them. What is going to happen to those players? Well, that's the thing. Once this stuff expires, what, you know, what happens? Technically, everything expires, and they're in breach of contract February 28th. Yes, yep. And so, so what, technically, so what happens? February 28th. And, and what happens on the PPA side? Because mm-hmm. it sounds like PPA is holding out on some things, too. So we've talked to quite a few players on both sides, and it seems, sounds like there's quite a few players on both sides that have not been paid. Yeah. So it seems that they've been, they're holding out, you know, like wanting to make payments from the new company, Mm -hmm. you know, and everybody is in limbo right now. I mean, the whole, it's just insane to me. Um, And it just feels like nobody has the player's best interest in mind right now. Mm Mm-hmm. The, the, you know, I mean, you, you do have to give like a little bit of credit to PPA because at least they're running events mm-hmm. where MLP, it's like, wait, we're ready to go. We're going to close. And now they're like, oh, sorry, we, we want to talk about Duper. Nobody gives a shit about Duper. Yeah. Right. Like Steve, figure out Steve Duper. Kuhn does. Yeah. Well, great. Good job, Steve. That's why you're pr- begging people not to sue you. <laughs> like worry about Duper on your own time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. If you want to get rich off a of duper, then figure that out later. Quit it, don't attach it to freaking MLP. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, but if it's not attached to MLP, then it will 100% die. Yeah, then it's not. There's yeah, no chance I agree. of it. So I, so I get why, like, if you're invested in duper, you need it attached and mm-hmm. you need it to be the official rating system. Yeah. But a lot of people don't care about it. Some of these players don't care. And yeah, I mean, I get calls and texts every day asking when yeah. and I and I don't know. So hype guys for your next little whatever they, what do they call it? It was like well it was a reel on Instagram, but yeah, it was like an update, like a name, recap. Yeah. So for your next update, how about this? I don't know. <laughs> Put that in there. <laughs> I don't know. But the good news is is it sounds like people are talking. <laughs> the good news it, is it could be done this week. I doubt it. But at least they're communicating now. Yeah. They weren't even communicating for a while. Yeah. But now they're actually like having board meetings and they're they're talking. And the whole thing is just nuts to me. Yeah. 
So, whatever. Black Bears, we're moving forward. <laughs> you guys are holding uh, combines. We are. We're having combines. You're redoing your logos. Yeah, we're doing, we're doing freaking merch. We're yeah. doing, we're doing, we're scouting. <laughs> we're, like, we're moving forward like this is going to happen because we're freaking optimistic. Yeah. And when it does happen, we're not going to get caught because yeah. I think when it happens, it's going to happen quick. Yeah. And we're ready. We're going to draft a freaking winner. Okay. Uh, but you guys are starting, well... I mean, not all the rules are ironed out, but as of now, you guys are starting in the Challenger League, right? Yeah. yeah. So as of right now, it's Challenger. We get six players. I mean, dude, giving us a chance, like giving us six players and you play four, I mean, it's, it's not even fair. Yeah. Like it's an unfair advantage. I, like, I feel bad for other teams. Yeah. Because we already proved with four players that we're going to outdraft you, <clears throat> and now you're going to give us six. It's, it's How did you finish last season? It's incredible. Well, last season we finished fine. We finished second, technically. Okay, so if there's a team the that points. finished above you. Yeah, but again, Tim Parks. Tim Parks <laughs> didn't even want to draft draft Todd Fote, who ended up being the MVP. So <laughs> Tim Parks gets zero credit for that team because he would have drafted Andres Celestrum, however mm-hmm. you say it. Celestrum. So yeah, he would have drafted him, and they would have finished dead last. Yeah, because we would have lobbed the six nine guy all day. APP India. Dude. Thoughts? It's it's awesome. Shout out our guy Yuvi, watches the show. Yeah. He, I guess he didn't play in it. He had the flu. But, dude, India, I love that the sport's growing and it's going international. Did you meet Kron? Yes, yes. You met him? Yes. Yeah, he, I saw him in the background over there. He, yeah. I'm sure he was having a great time. Yeah, dude. Yeah, Pran is it great. It was awesome. And Caitlin Kerr was the announcer. Yeah. Flew her over there, freaking Susanna Barr play, they yeah. ask you, Megan Fudge, Rob Nunn. What, what do you think about that, kind of doing these pit stops in different countries? Yeah, I think it's. I think you have to, to grow the sport. What do you think about PPA doing that? Should they do that? Yeah, the fact that PPA hasn't gone international yet, I think is a big mistake, at least to Canada. Uh-huh. Um, they, they've got to start expanding, start going international. I mean, there's MLP Australia already. Yeah, I think, so, I mean... You can get into all the legalities of it, but I'm pretty sure APP just kind of partnered with yeah. the tournament that was already going on. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. They just they threw their name on yeah, it. Yeah, they just put their name on yeah. it, and that's really what PPA should do. I mean, yeah. APP went to, was it England last year? Yeah. Yeah, you got to go international. you got to start growing the sport internationally. That's that's how it's going to get bigger. Like mm-hmm. we, saw, we all saw the article about China and how there's... You know they want to take over and there's all these players and yeah you know i think they threw i saw some. i mean the stats people throw around are just ludicrous, yeah we don't know what the numbers uh, are somebody i can't remember who somebody said that they think within 10 years there could be i could be mis- mis- mistaken but i think they said around 100 million yeah that's that uh, riff guy yeah i think he said that around 100 million players yeah and it, it, and I think that's probably a little bit, you know, <laughs> yeah. But it's growing, and the sport is going to just continue to grow. And the way for you to continue to grow it is you got to go international. Yeah. And if you, if you do that, I mean, yeah, PPA needs to get in on that. You know, APP obviously is already doing it. ML, I think MLP needs to go international at some point. Yeah. And how sick would well, it be? Well, MLP, I don't know the setup of it, but they have Australia. Yeah, they I mean, do have Wes Australia. Wes Gabrielson is down there yeah, right and now. Yeah, and they have Canada. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, but that's not MLP. That's a different league. Yeah, but they do have like an MLP style. Yeah, it's a style, but yeah. this is MLP. It has yeah. Major League Pickleball yeah, in Australia. Yeah, it does. Australia. It has her name yeah. on it. I think Steve Kuhn actually still has ownership in that. Uh-huh. But how sick would it be if at some point the winner of MLP Australia comes over and plays? Yeah. In MLP here, yeah, you know, like yeah. the winning team, the winning team, yeah, that'd be that'd be insane. I mean, what if there's a Mexico? What if there's a yeah, right? And they come over and play. There's a Canada, yeah, it'd be awesome. And, How, and just, like World Cup, yeah, you do like a World Cup exactly. Yeah. And and the sport just continues to grow that way. And if you do that, that's how you also get into the Olympics because mm-hmm. a certain number of countries have to play. Look at you go off the all these ideas. I mean, just let me be commissioner. Just president. Who you know what else? Just president. A lot of people said this, and I and I agree with them one hundred percent. The other way to grow the sport, college. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. If you go yeah. pick a ball in college. Yeah. I mean, it is in college right now. Yes, but, but like you make it. Yeah. Uh, yes, if you mainstream it, it becomes like a legitimate. How do you do that? Start signing uh, players, like start paying them, or. Well, you gotta. You gotta. First of all, you gotta get it become an NCAA sanctioned. Would you sport. go back to college? 
dude, do I, I probably have some eligibility. You might have a couple of years yeah. left. Red shirt, blue yeah, shirt. Right, yeah, I'd be like. <laughs> white yeah. shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you go college teams and it becomes like a sanctioned NCAA sport. Yeah. Dude, it's going to be insane. It's just going to continue to grow. And the fact is, is they have some crazy sports mm -hmm. in college. I don't think pickleball is that far off. No. From becoming like I mean, a I played, sport. I played tennis in college. Yeah. And for probably 80 to 90% of the venues, the schools that we went to, there yeah. were hardly any fans. Yeah. Hardly any fans. So yeah. I guarantee you could get more... Um, more spectators at pickleball matches. Yeah. How sick would it be? Like you have a kid. I mean, lo, let's go with my nephew, Leo. Yeah. Leo Chun, right? <laughs> Who is not blood related. Yeah. I Dude, feel like that look, could be racism. We look somehow. alike. We'll get into that when we talk about your partner um, for men's. So Leo <laughs> has been playing pickleball since he was what? Seven, eight years old. Yeah. Like this is a kid that he's like 12 now. Yeah. And he's grown up, growing up playing the sport. And he's traveling and everything. Imagine like Leo gets a scholarship yeah. to play pickleball in college, and he gets recruited. I mean, I don't think that's that far off when this kid is in high school. Yeah, we may be there, you know, in four years. Where yeah, like you know, I, I think I've told people my memories could be wrong, but I think three to five years is what I'm predicting. Yeah, and and, and if he gets a call like you know you've got freaking pickleball coaches from Texas or USC or whatever being like hey. You know, we want him to come and he goes on recruiting trips. Yeah. And it'd be it'd be awesome. And that's how I think that the sport would continue to grow. Yep. So that'd be a big thing. Okay, awesome. Um, for our next sponsor of this segment, Vulcan, the V Pro Flight Ball. Vulcan, Vulcan is also the title or the official ball sponsor of the PPA Tour. And so if you would like to use the ball that they use, yes. if you want to compete in their tournaments. Go check them out at VulcanSportingGoods.com and use code KOTC. KOTC. Thank you for the support. We love your ball. Yeah. Check it out. Vulcan Sporting Goods. Okay. Uh, what else is going on, Jimmy? Anything else? Um, we no. can go into Mesa. That's coming yeah, up. Yeah. Let's go. Let's look at the. Let's look at the. Uh, the. The draws. The draws for Mesa. Yeah. So as we were talking. There are a couple players who are not playing this who opted out because of the whole financial situation. Um, so I just situation. looked before we started. Mm -hmm. I looked at registration fees. Okay, if you're not, if you're not a pro player or whatever it is, I looked at registration fees. Okay. Yeah. So you're one ten to register. Okay. And then, or, yeah, and then you're one hundred and thirty five dollars per, per event. event. So if you were to play, so if you were to play singles. Mixed and men's, right? Plus there's a service fee, $55. So You're not doing math in your head, you're no. opting to use the calculator? No. So dude, you're $570 yeah. to play three events for qual if you yeah. want to play qualifiers. And that's not including the travel, yeah. the time away from home or work or anything like that, no. the food. It's, it's expensive. It's expensive, it's a grind. Like you see why I think that the barrier of entry, while it's easy to sign up to play, mm -hmm. the barrier of entry is expensive. Yep. You know, anybody can play pro. Like, literally, I can get on and I can sign up to play yep. pro in Minnesota and play qualies right now, yep. which is awesome. That's that's cool. I mean, that's why we see guys like Augie Gee or, like, you know, break, people break through. Mm -hmm. But the cost to do that, yep. tournament, you know, tournament after tournament is nuts. Yep. So that I mean that's why obviously you can do it much cheaper if you choose. You can sleep on people's couches. Yeah, there's there's ways to do there's it. There's ways but, to do it, but yeah. for the for the most part, it's yeah. it's fairly expensive. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, so we got the draws pulled up. Uh, let's go through men's singles yeah. right now. Let me pull it up. Right um, now. So this is a progressive tournament. So that means they're going to start on Wednesday and they're doing one round of each event. So men's yeah. singles, men's doubles, uh, women's doubles, and mix all yeah. on one day, yep. just Progressive one round draw. each day. Okay. Yeah. So that first round is interesting. I mean, the one thing that stands out, mm -hmm. Tyler, is you, there's a chance that you're going to probably play qualifier. Yes. But then you may get the two big tennis stars back to back. <laughs> Sam, you'd have Sam Query. I got to get through Sammy boy. And then you'd have Jack Sock. Yeah. I mean, back-to-back -back tennis guys. Yeah. 
Um, and then the winner of that will go on to face McGuffin. So I'm sure people would love to, well, actually people would probably like to see me just because he flipped me off or they would like to see yeah, Jack I mean, Sock. I mean, it's win-win for America. Yeah. Win-win for America if, it, if it's you or if it's Jack. Um, yeah, so I mean, other, like, it's interesting that, like, Donald Young is a 39 seed and he gets two buys. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, these tennis players, I understand that you want to feature them. You're paying them a lot of money. I feel like but now that they've played, well, there's only been one or two tournaments that have gone on, but I feel like the initial hype has kind of died down slightly. Yeah. Like, Jeannie Bouchard, I mean, not everyone's going to be tuning in to watch her play now. Like no, that we're first tuning event. in. Honestly, we're tuning in. To watch her fail at this point. Yeah. You're tuning in almost that a lot. first tournament, we saw the numbers. We saw those numbers and they were they were huge. Yeah, huge numbers. Because everyone was tuning in to watch her. But now that she's continuing to play, I doubt that she'll draw as much attention as she initially did. Um, and so with that said, if they are not showing their progress, if they're not having these wins to back it up, I don't think they should get push forward to that round of No, and, and maybe this is the last one, right? Maybe you give them one well, more shot. Well, I think shot. technically it's in their contract that they'll get to the round of 32. I mean, that's whoever cut that deal. That's a horrible deal. Yeah. Because, like I said, Donald Young getting a buy over. So I know, played the last two tournaments singles, yeah. and I think I started in the round of 128, I think. Yeah. And both times I won my first round, which yeah. isn't saying much, but I'm still having to play in the round of 128. And so I'm wondering at what point um, I'll make that jump into... Yeah, I mean, Hay combined. Hayden is yeah. a 15 seed, Yeah. right? And he has to play the round of 128. Gabe Tardio, he's Gabe playing. Gabe Tardio is a 16, and he's got to play Chris Hayworth, yeah. 18. And then you have Donald Young, who's a 39 seed, and he gets a buy. So at least the seeding is right, though. It's reflecting where they should be seeded, but they're still starting yeah, a little but bit. but where this looks, Donald Young should be playing. Yeah. I mean, honestly, based off of seeding, Hayden should be... Yes, yeah. ...should be the one that gets that buy into yeah. the round of 128, and Donald Young would probably be somewhere around... He'd be playing someone like... Johnny Pickleball. Yeah. That's about where this team is. Okay, so, uh, moving forward. Are there any yeah. big things you're looking for in this tournament? So Ben John's last tournament, he went out, I believe, in the quarters. Yeah, so, 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 Dylan, the quarters. so Dylan and J-Dub are back. Looks like Ben John's is on a collision course with J-Dub or Gabe Joseph. He well, kind of, yeah, yeah. He kind of misses. He, he's on the right side of the bracket this time where mm -hmm. he's going to miss – he may get, you know, Connor Garnett or Alshon. Connor Garnett's actually been upset a couple times recently as well. Yeah. The one guy to look out for, obviously, is Fed. I mean, he's made back-to-back -back finals. Fed is playing tough. Yeah, he's playing tough. I mean, but he he will have Jay or Jaume most likely. That'll be a fun match if Jaume yeah. plays Jay again. Yeah, I mean, that'd be a good match. And then we have Dylan, who's coming off of a championship. Yep. Um, and then obviously he'll be fresh. Yeah. But he's got Jack Sock, Colin Schick, Tyson McGuffin, yeah. all on his side of the bracket. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be – I mean, single men's singles is, is tough. And it's been really – it's actually been really exciting lately. So, that will be fun. And okay. we'll post these we'll – post, we'll post these draws. Actually, we're going to post them in, our, in the Discord. Okay. So, if you want to check out the draws. They might even be released by the time this is – I think they are released, yeah. actually, but I'm going to post them in here. Uh, who do you have winning it? Um, I'm going to... Okay, top top let, three. Let's write these so down. The last time you got burned, because didn't you say Hayworth was going to win? Yeah, which was a terrible mistake. But <laughs> but I think that this time we're... I think this is the tournament that Ben wins. Okay. So I think Ben wins. I'm going to say he plays Fed in the finals. Okay. And then I'm going to say the bronze match is Christian Alshon and... Jame. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll see how that goes. Uh, That's right. I'm gonna write. We, these, I'm gonna write these down. Our spectators will be sure to let you know if you are right. It's or unbelievable. Wrong. I can't miss. I can't miss anything. <laughs> okay. Women singles. Uh, we got a full draw. Uh, 128. Love to see it. Paris Todd is in there. Christine Maddox is in there. Angie Walker's in there. Chow Yi Wang is in there. Um, yeah. Elise Jones is playing. Yeah. Elise is playing singles. Okay, so women's singles, I think, is pretty... So Jeannie's going to play Paris Todd, Jeannie's first round. So Paris is going to have two full matches before her. So Paris is going to smack Jeannie. 
Um, so you can't keep. Who has all. more fashion out of those two? I mean, I think Paris has wins that one too. I mean, Genie can't keep a ball in place. So, um, yeah, I think Paris is gonna is gonna. Dominique s- is playing. Yeah, Dominique is obviously a very good singles player. It looks like uh, Leia is also playing. Uh, Leia is on because Catherine's back. Leia ends up with the three seed. Yeah, and so she's on the same side of the bracket as Annalie. Yeah. Uh, and then Mary Brasha, I mean, so looking at this bracket, how's Ava Ignatovich get a bye? Yikes. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say that Caitlin Christian, who's a 17 seed, mm-hmm. ends up playing Annalie in the quarters. Okay. I think Annalie does beat her. On the other side of the bracket, I think that Paris beats Jeannie. And then Anna, Anna Bright is playing singles. Where's she, she at? She's actually in the round of 128. So okay. she'll play a quality, and then she'll probably get Lena. What, what then number Edith. is she? Where's she at? She's a 21. She's number seven. Okay. Wow. Anna so, Bright. Who's a great singles player, actually. Yeah. Yeah. She did well. So I think we're going to see Leia and Anna Bright in the quarters. I think Leia wins that, and then we'll have Anna. She beats Lee. Lena? Lena? Pedigamante? Yeah. And then she beats Judith. And I think we're going to have Leia and Anna Bright in the quarters. If, and then we're going to have Annalie and Leia in the semis on one side. Okay. Uh, on the other side, um, oh, the other side's tough too. I mean, Chow Yi versus Dominique could be tough. Okay. I think, I think Dominique beats Salome, and then she plays Catherine and, and drops that one to Catherine. And then on the other side, I think Georgia... Beats Mary. And so we have Catherine and Georgia, Annalie and Leia. I'm going to take Annalie and... I mean, honestly, it's hard to not take anyone but Annalie and Catherine. So I'm going to say Annalie and Catherine in the finals. Okay. All right, moving on. Mixed doubles. Mixed doubles is exciting, Tyler. Okay. I think it's my favorite event. Is it really? Yeah. Why? Well, I just think that, one, the pairings, it's like the ones where it's most volatile. You know, I... I, I was thinking about mixed doubles and having a conversation with somebody and yeah. um, they did not like mixed doubles and they were saying was it AJ? No, uh, but I know AJ hates mixed doubles. Yeah, there's a lot of people who don't like it, but yeah, it's it's interesting the dynamics of mixed doubles. Yeah, it's very interesting. I don't want to say what I'm uh, thinking because people will um, label me as something, but it's very interesting. You're sexist. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, mixed doubles. Tyra and Rafa. Have to play a play in. Okay, so Tyra was supposed to play with Dylan. Supposed to play with Dylan. Dylan said, "Go find somebody else." I don't think I'm going to play. And now it sounds like Dylan has made progress on his contract talks, Mm -hmm. and now he's back and he's going to play. But Tyra had already committed to committed to Rafa, which makes sense because she didn't have anybody, Mm -hmm. and so now she's playing with Rafa over Dylan. I actually don't even think Dylan's playing mixed. Um, so yeah, so Tyra and Rafa. It's a tough, tough match for someone in a play-in game. And then you and Christine Maddox, you play Chuck and Chow Yi. You Chuck play, Taylor, my you neighbor. Play, yeah, you play Chuckles. Yep. Utah. And then another play-in match, Leia and Desk, you have to do a play-in. Okay. Who are they? Who do they have? They Hayden, have, Hayden and Maggie are in a play-in yeah, as well. Yeah, Hayden and Maggie are in a play-in. Colin Johns has actually been doing decent in mixed. I mean, he had nowhere to go but up, but he's actually been picking up some good wins. Who does he have? He has... Oh, I just lost his... Oh, he has a uh, quali. He plays a quali. No, who's his partner? Oh, he's playing with Brooke Buckner. Okay. He's been playing with Brooke Buckner quite a bit. And then Edda and Pablo have been playing again. Yeah. I mean, those are tough. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I think Edda and Pablo, I mean, they had a great run. They almost freaking beat Ben Anley there. Jeannie and Greg Dow. Jeannie and Greg Dow getting two buys. Whoever is, who is that? Leia and Dayescu. Mm-hmm. I mean, talk about an absolute gift for those two. <laughs> I mean, that is a gift from heaven. They're going to smack Jeannie and Greg Dow. <laughs> like, it, it's incredible. Like, they get to play them in the round of 32. I mean, your, your gift for winning is Georgia and, and Jada, but what a, I mean, that's a great draw for them. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Jesse. Irvin and Christian Alshon. Yeah, so Jesse's back. She's yeah. been she's been injured, so it's good to have her back. Um, 
Fed and Jade are playing together, which is which is a kind of a newer partnership. We have Fed and who? Jade Kalamo. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's some. And there's then some Jackie good... and Riley are back. Yeah, at so it. Jackie and Riley are back at it. Yeah. They haven't had. They'll like... play Vivian and Thomas their second round, which would be the quarters. Which is kind of their arch rival because Thomas is just he sits on Riley's freaking yeah. horrible floating drops. Yeah. I mean, he earns them. He just flushes them. I mean, Riley's got to get that ball down. Mm -hmm. Like Thomas and Viv are like their freaking kryptonite right now. Yeah. So, and then obviously James and Anna have been the number two mixed team mm -hmm. in the world. I mean, they're playing really well. So, so it'll be interesting. I think that we're going to see Ben and Annalie obviously come out of the top of that bracket. I actually really like Leia and Daskew mm -hmm. to come out of the other side the, and play Ben and Annalie in the semis. Um, on the bottom, I'm actually, I'm going to say that Megan and Tyson upset James and Anna. Okay. And then I think that I'm going to say. They have to get through Julian, your boy Julian and Lauren. They do. Julian. I think they played them at the Masters, Julian and Lauren, and yeah. they actually got a game off them or yeah. they, they were up on yeah. them. They, yeah, they could be. So them. it could be close. And then I think Jackie and Riley. Okay. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Mix is. Mix so who do you have coming, coming out of Mixed? I'm going to say Annalie and Ben take on Jackie and Riley in the finals. Okay. Bold prediction. It is a bold prediction. All right. Moving on to women's pro doubles. I love women's doubles. Do you think that women's doubles, do you think that the points last longer because women don't hit as hard as men? It's because they stand off the line three feet. It's not, no, has nothing it's, to do with power. It's not what Anna Bright said. <laughs> she actually did say that. She said both. <laughs> she said I promise you, the women have enough, they have enough power sufficient to end a point. Do they? They do. Do you think paddles need to be nerfed? I do, yeah. You do? Well, not nerfed, but there needs to be a clear limit. You think these clear new, rules. Like a gearbox and the needle. Yes, uh, too powerful. And you know me, I've been a staunch supporter of saying that paddles do not matter in terms of power. I have crossed that point. There are some paddles that you are have. insanely. You've changed you change your tune? I've changed. I'm oh. a flip flopper. Wow. Yeah. That's shocking. What, yeah. How do you feel about rally scoring? Uh, I, I, don't, I, I like it for certain events. For MLP, I think it's fine. Have but you I change would... your tune that it doesn't matter? No. Okay. All right. Women's doubles. Nice try. <laughs> Women's doubles. Okay. Um, Christine Maddox and your girl, Jillian Braverman. Yeah. How about Jilly B? That's actually, I mean, that team could do some damage. I mean, they have Tammy Emmerich and Olivia McMillan. They could win that. And then. You get a date with Annalie and Catherine. Um, Leia and Did Chapman. you see last time they played them at Masters? Yeah. Annalie was teen off on the ball. Yeah. Hit, yeah. Ripping it. Okay, she's like, Ripping it right Here's the thing with Annalie. She's not going to slow a ball down. Ripping it. Right? And, that, and that's why Jackie and Jade played them so tough is yeah. because they played polar opposite matches. Yeah. They slowed it way down. She, she was ripping them at Jill's like right in her yeah. chest. Yeah. And she's going to do it again. Yeah. Uh, Elise Jones and Megan Fudge are paired up. Okay. That's awesome. An interesting match. Also, Millie and Bobby Oshiro, keep an eye on that team because they just won a gold APP. Okay. So, yeah, they're playing pretty well together. Um, Jeannie and Chow Yi get a bye. So, who, who gets gifted this time? I mean, oh, Lucy and Callie get the gift. They get the gift of Jeannie. George is playing with Mary Humberg. No, uh, Jeannie and Chow have to win one before Lucy oh, and yeah. Kelly. So they're not going to. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, Lauren Mercado and... Tyra and Paris are playing together. Yeah, this is their first tournament together. That one will be fun. Uh, Tina Pisnik and Jesse. I like that mm -hmm. team. Mary and Maggie have to play the Kalamotos for like the fourth straight tournament in the yeah. quarters. Um, so this one, I really think that... I love Etta and Megan, how they're playing. Yeah. So I could see Etta and Megan coming out of the court quarters. They have to play Jackie and Jade, but I like that team. Vivi, David, and Anna Bright, I like them making it to the semis. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, it's really hard. Callie and Lucy are so consistent. I like their draw. Irina's back, but I really like their draw. And then obviously Catherine and Annalie. And then I think, yeah, I think Catherine and Annalie end up winning it. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, men's pro doubles. Yeah. Who are you playing with, Tyler? 
You know who I'm playing with. How do you say his name? I'm not going to say his name. Look up his name right now and tell me who I'm playing with. You're playing with Quang Duong. Is that how you say it? I think so, yeah. If I don't say it that way, I'm labeled. I get can we get some signs, some really cool signs? I think there's a lot of creative things people can do with our last names. Lung Duong? Long Dong. Tyler. There's a lot of cool things. This is what got things. us in trouble. This is what got us in trouble. It's a nickname. How did you, how did you end up with this partnership? Uh, that's a great question. So I was supposed to play with Todd Fote, uh, but we played the you first... You dropped him? Uh, on the contrary. Oh, um, whoa, whoa. So we were supposed to play the first few tournaments, and uh, we did not have good results whatsoever. Uh -huh. And so we pretty much decided to kind of part ways. Still good friends with him. We actually played this last week. Um, you I, guys are fine? Uh, I think so, yeah. Um, you think? Yeah, I mean, we haven't talked about it, but we did play with each other for a couple hours. I mean, he did get Rafa, so did he upgrade in the lefty department? He, he liked the lefties. He, did he upgrade? I don't know. That's TBD. Yeah. So Gabe Tardio and Andre De Esky are playing together, and they have to play in the round of 128. Mm -hmm. That's a tough matchup for anybody. And, and honestly, I don't think that that's the worst thing in the world, because other than having to play on a Tuesday... People you, want... <laughs> It's, it's not a bad match. thing to play yeah. earlier. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, when I play with Jeannie Bouchard, I honestly wish we would have played an earlier match because that was her first time ever playing. Yeah. And so had she had one or two matches under her belt, I think we maybe not would have won, but we could have got some more points. Yeah. Also, keep an eye on Jame and, Car and CJ Klinger. Mm -hmm. They get Callan and Hayden, and then they get Connor Garda and DJ Young. They yeah. very well could make it all the way to the... All the way to the quarters. Uh, where are you looking at? Where are they, the bottom half or top half? They're the top half. They're team number... Uh, oh, gosh. Oh. They're in the bottom half. They're on the bottom half, yeah. Yeah, uh, 11, yeah. Okay. So they very well Yeah, could. so they'll play Callan and Hayden, and then the winners of that will get Connor Garnett and DJ Young. Yeah, and then um, they would probably most likely get, say, Riley and Thomas. They, I mean, they very well could make, that, to, could make it all the way to the quarters. No, then they'd have to play me, my team, or J-Dub and Dylan. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're skipping. Yeah. You got dyslexia. I, I do. You're all over the place. I could. It's very possible. Uh, Julian Arnold and Jack Monroe. That's a little bit interesting. That is interesting. I mean, Jack didn't have great results in his last tournament. Mm -hmm. um, he seems to smack people on the APP, and he seems to be the number one guy in the next gen. Although, how old? Like, isn't Jack like 21, 22 of this? Stage? Yeah, but next gen goes up to, I think, 24. You're not next gen anymore. Yeah. Like, now you're, you're either current gen or you're never gen. <laughs> at this at that age you're you're not next gen like never gen <laughs> like it's true like you're i think emily ackerman was playing and she's been graduated from college for like three years yeah she's like a doctor now yeah um but yeah like it's next gen they got to cut it off well at what age 19 18? i think i think so i think 21 and under for sure i, I think would 19. say like 19 is, 18 19 and under i think next gen's got to be teenagers yeah so. you're not next gen when the number one female in the world is 17, mm -hmm. right? And you have other 17-year-olds like Georgia. Oh. Um, and then even on the men's side, right? You have like a Gabe Tardo. You have a Hayden. Yeah. Like you're Technically, not, I think J-Dub could still play next gen if yeah, you Yeah, J-Dub, you have, you know, Kwong Duong. The, you, these guys are not like, you're not next gen anymore if you're, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yep. So uh, maybe they can even do it where it's like experience, like how long you've been playing, even though everybody lies about it. Pat Smith and Jay are playing. Uh, do you think we can get Pat to I a post would on like Facebook? To and talk see about, if we can, yeah, I want to talk to Pat about bronze medal matches. And see if he can, uh, if we can get him kicked yeah, out. Can we get him on the pod? <laughs> talk about bronze matches. Exactly. Uh, Travis and AJ? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That's, that's actually a team that could get really hot and upset some people, or it's a team that could lose 11-1, 11-2. Mm -hmm. it, it'll be interesting. Um, so I think that, and then Wyatt Stone and Spencer Smith somehow have a buy to the round of 32. I don't know how, I don't know who Spencer has naked pictures of or who subscribes to the OnlyFans, but that's insane to me. Um, but Wyatt does have a win over Ben and Colin. With Jaume. Yeah. So maybe that's why. But Gabe Tardy and Dieski are going to smack him. Yeah. So I think that... We're going to see Ben and Colin. I think AJ and Travis are going to beat Pat and Jay. That's okay. my prediction. And then Ben and Colin are going to play AJ and Travis. 
That's a bold, that's a bold prediction, especially with the results uh, with Jay and Pat. They've had a great year so far. I also think that Zane and Alshon are going to make the quarters. Okay. Which means I hope somebody's play. keeping track of all these predictions. We're bouncing that, around everywhere. No, which means they have to beat Paul oh, and Fed. Well, Christian beat him last tournament. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then I think that uh, CJ and Jame are mm -hmm. going to make the quarters. Quarters is pretty tough. No, they, dude, they play Callan and Hayden, and then they play Connor Garnett and DJ. That's winnable. You're going to have to play J-Dub and Dylan. Second round, yeah, if we get through our first run. And then I'm going to say James and Matt lose to Tyson and Deckel. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, so, lots of fun see. matches. Lots dude, of yeah, fun matches. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's good that there's actually... Like, every single round now feels pretty good. I feel like three, four years ago, maybe even two years ago, you had to wait until the quarters or semis, but now it's from the get-go. Yeah, well, it's great that there's actually pickleball too. Yeah. Like we're talking about actual pickleball, not that there hasn't been a couple tournaments already this year, but these are fun matchups. It's exciting. Mesa, that progression draw, the players seem to love it. Yes, so far. It's kind of hard, in my opinion, it's still hard to form an, an opinion on it because yeah. we've only had one. Yeah. Um, there's definitely uh, pros and there's also cons about it as well. Yeah, I mean, you, know? you could be home to your family by Wednesday. Exactly. Yeah. Or. Yeah, you know, but and, but if you're one of those, if you're one of those players, do you book a round way trip or do you book a single way trip? Because if you book the round way, it's normally cheaper than booking a single way. I feel like it's weird, but I feel like for me, mentally, you can't have your trip pre-booked to go home before the finals. Even if you've never gotten past the semis. Yeah, I feel like mentally you're defeating yourself at that point. Like just, just. It, like just for the power of positive thinking, mm -hmm. I I have my trip booked until Monday. Even if that will cost you an extra five hundred to a thousand dollars, yeah, it's worth it for your mental state <laughs> because you're already defeated if you have your trip booked to go home on a Friday. Okay. You're already mentally like. What about if you can do free changes on the flight? Like then go to Monday and then change it. To same day changes, so you could leave later that night or so. Yeah, I would just still go to Monday. I just think mentally. I'm gonna book my trip, like I'm gonna be there the whole week. Should we start a GoFundMe account for a lot of these players, I'll put myself in there included, uh, that just don't know when to book and then we can use those funds from that. Yeah, I just think that these players, like yeah, I think that if you are booking a trip to leave early, you're like you're done. You but what if you'd be what if you're happy with uh, getting to the semis? I what mean if, if that's happy? your goal, then book your trip to have be your goal. But okay. if your goal is not to win. Yeah. And you don't think you can win, then honestly, go back to your day job. Wow. Spoken. Well, I mean, that's what you're here for. You're a professional pickleball player. Like, there's not... Guys in the NBA aren't just happy to be there. I'm sure there are some that are just happy to be there. Yeah, but I just think that they're, like, they're trying to win, though. Like, you, you play to win. I actually heard a weird stat that said, and I think this was with all professional athletes, but this was specific towards NBA players. 40 to 50% of NBA players did not enjoy playing basketball. Yeah, maybe maybe not, but but they're, they're getting paid big. You're getting paid, so you're going <laughs> you're going to play it. But pickleball you're not. So if you're playing pickleball, you probably enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. And and if you're defeat I mean there's got to be like one of those like mentalists or one of those, you know, Ed Milet guys or these, you know, whatever. There's so many of these freaking motivational speaker dude, David mm -hmm. Goggins out there that there's some, I bet there's something, like if you book it, yeah. there's got to be something to it. Somebody, somebody's going to tell us. Yeah. Power of positive thinking. Yeah. Right? But, I mean. Where's Gary V? Gary V. On the financial side, with MLP players and all players, like you're literally, if you plan this efficiently, yeah. you'll literally be saving thousands, hundreds of Thousands of yeah, dollars. Yeah, but the problem is... The is, flight, the hotel, yeah, the car, the food, true. everything. And I know like hotels, right? Like you can't really cancel hotels the yep. day of. Like if you book it all the way through Monday, then... So yeah, I get it that it's hard, but I just feel like mentally for me, mm -hmm. I would plan on staying a whole week. Okay. So... I like yeah. it. Words of wisdom, encouragement. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on. C&D Pickleball Nets. C&D Nets. They are the sponsor of this next segment. Thank you, CND. They are the best pickleball nets out there. The best pickleball um, nets. I'm com. actually putting in a pickleball court at my house. You are? Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, 
insanely expensive to do it. But anyways, uh, we're putting a pickleball court and we will be using a CND pickleball net. Can I use that? Uh, you can use it, yeah. We'll get some great content of you doing something out there. No, I, we're gonna play singles. Okay. How much, do you want me how, playing with my offhand or normal How much hand? space are you gonna give yourself? The standard court. What colors are you using, you know yet? TBD, maybe I'll do a poll, but uh, my wife likes just, I think the blue, blue on blue. Blue on blue looks great. Yeah. The blue on blue, yeah, or green on green, yeah. with white, white lines. Masters, well it yeah. has to be white lines. I know, but sorry, what about your border though? Uh, I'm not sure, yeah. So people say that if you go gray border, it doesn't, it's hard to see it's the color. Yeah, it doesn't contrast. But, but I don't know if that's is, necessarily, well, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it is, but depending but on But your the, line calls are bad anyway, so. Exactly, anything close to that line is out of there. Will you, put, will you play with your Vision Pros on? Yes. You know what I was thinking? Vision Pros, Yeah. create an app. Actually, somebody told this to me. Is it a tax write-off for you to put a cord in? Of course. Because you're yeah, a pro player. This is my business. Yeah. Um, Incredible. Play with them on, and then when somebody goes for a certain shot, it'll light up. Really? And say, hey, go for the Ernie here, or this person's most Stop. likely. I'm dead serious, that's really? a training tool. Really? I'm saying somebody should create oh, that. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that'd be, that'd that'd be, be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and then insane. that can help you identify of, hey, I need to go for an Ernie, I need to speed up, I need to pull right here. I told you that I did the, the, that deep training with those glasses that flash. Uh-huh. I flash super and so like you stay focused on the ball. Interesting. It's it's crazy. Like the, the stuff that's out there is Okay. Anyways, C back to C and D. C and D. Thank you for the sponsorship yep. of this show. Uh, you guys make incredible nets. Go check them Dude. out. Once again, I kid you not, I saw another facility that had like five indoor courts. I think this was in San Francisco somewhere, but they were using Super cheap nets, like the Wasn't 100 Padel bar or whatever. Yes, I yeah, think I so. saw that too. And they were using like the one fifty dollar nets. Yeah, first had of all, they invested, or if you invest in these high quality C and D nets, it'll. It was crazy because I saw that too. It was yeah. on someone's story. I think it was Irina's. Yeah, actually. Irina. And I'm like looking at this. And I'm like, dude, that real estate yeah. for that warehouse and stuff in San Francisco has yeah. got to be insane. Yeah. And then you guys are using freaking seventy dollar temp nets. Yeah. Like what, what in the world? Reach out to them. Reach out to CND Pickleball Net. They'll give you deals if you're ordering five or ten nets. And yep. so it makes, makes it much more economical. But I promise you that will elevate the experience of playing pickleball. Yeah. Love CND Nets. Love the dudes over there. They're, the other thing is they're good people. Yep. Right? Like Troy and Tyler are good dudes. And yep. like they're the type of people that you want to work with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's like... It's like not a massive company, right? Like yep. these locally owned companies, it's it's awesome to work with guys like that. Yep. Anyways, so, go check them out. Bestpickleballnets.com and yeah. use code KOTC. It's going to give you a little bit off and it helps support them and us. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Jimmy? Do we have some questions? Yeah, let's look at the questions. Okay. We got we got a few questions from the Discord. Okay. Um yeah. So Let's while see. Jimmy is pulling that up. Yeah, do you have any questions? No, I think that's it. We forgot to do the questions. Um, we'll, we'll get back to doing that. Oh, by the way, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, but at uh, Phoenix Desert Ridge, yeah. I was talking with somebody at lunch, just met them, and they were fans of the pod. And I go home a week later, we get a donation. $250 from this we did? guy. Yeah. Just because you talked to him? Just because I talked to him, yeah. Like he's a, people are buying your friendship. I know. He was a super nice guy. He lives out in Arizona. That's awesome. Um, Jim Kloss? Jim Kloss. It was not Jim Kloss, yeah, but... he would never. <laughs> he does want uh, both of us to help commentate. Kloss? Yeah. I would... No. He's doing the grandstand court to, again. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's incredible at it. Kloss is fine, dude. Um, you guys would be besties. No, Klaus and I, I actually like Jim Klaus as a person. I just think he's a bad commentator. But I think Klaus is, and I, and I think Klaus knows his stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I really do. But it's Who's also... smarter, you or him? Well, we don't need to get into that. It's obvious. But I also think it's very hard to commentate. Okay. That's the thing. Hey, let's do this. You, you posted a thing about a number of rackets smashed by the big three in their careers. Uh-huh. Who do you think smashed the most, broken the most pickleball paddles? I mean, Tyson, he's probably up there. Somebody said Fed. 
Um, Tyson fed all Sean has got to be up there as he well. Smashed a few. Julian's got to be up there. Well, we've saw Julian in was it Daytona? Yeah. Literally every match. He was Who was that tennis him. player that went to the bag and just started smashing rackets like seven in a row? Oh yeah. There was this tennis right. player that did it, and we've got to see that in pickleball. Yeah. That just go through the paddles. That was Zane Affleck would do it for oh, sure. Zane Affleck is playing Mesa. Is he really? Yeah. Who's he playing with? Uh, I can't remember who he's playing with, but he's playing Mesa. No way. Yeah, it's crazy. He must be out on parole. I wonder if he has to play with an ankle bracelet on. Are you going to go say hi to Zane Affleck? He must be in the, the qualities. I think, he, I think he's got to play qualities. Gotcha. Yeah. Are you going to go say hi to him? Of course. That's your guy? Yeah. Did you see Annalie ask for Valentine? I did not. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Like, is it weird if you're underage to be like, will you be my Valentine? Weird. All right. You get any of those questions or? Dude, there's so, there's like, I cluttered this up. This is my own fault. <laughs> so how about this, Tyler? Is the Vision Pro what you expected? What do you use it for? Have you played pickleball while wearing it yet? Uh, it's incredible for entertainment. It all depends on your use case scenarios, what you're using it for. Um, if you're just getting it for entertainment, 100% go for it. If you're trying to be productive with it, there's a lot of people on YouTube that have made videos that say, check out my workflow and they're editing videos and stuff like that. I just haven't, um, I don't think it's quite there yet. I think maybe one or two more generations down the road, it'll be there. Uh, but entertainment, it's unparalleled. It's, it's so good for entertainment. Jimmy, can you explain the new MLP draft process? So for uh, Premier, if they stick with this, what happens is everybody gets $500,000 of hypothetical money, and then you can spend up to $500,000 of real money, okay? So that's a million dollars, okay? So what happens is with the, with the million dollars is you bid on draft slots. Mm -hmm. And you're bidding, originally you're only bidding on two rounds, and then the last two rounds were gonna be a regular draft. Now you're bidding on four rounds. Okay. Okay, so for example, if you want Ben Johns, you could hypothetically spend a million dollars on Ben Johns, mm -hmm. And then you end up with picks 46, 47, and 48 because you're out of money. So if you think Ben Johns can win with picks 46, 47, and 48, you may want to drop yep. your, four, your full allotment on Ben. Yep. I mean, I think an argument could be made that Ben did win with probably picks 46, 47, and 48. I want to say, year. no, not all of them. I mean, who, like, Jesse? She's not a 46 pick. No, but she's probably mid-30s. Okay, but it's not 46. Lacey, probably mid-30s. Eric, probably late 40s. Yeah, but that's not 46, 47, 48. I know, but I'm just saying, who would be 46, 47, 48? So know. it would be Glosman, if we look at last year. Could he win with her? Glosman, Mary Brasha, and AJ. Could he win with that team? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you're, I'm just, you're getting soft. Jimmy. I'm just saying. You're getting soft. No, he can't win with that team. Okay, absolutely not. <laughs> AJ would probably win with that team off the court. But no, I mean, anyways, I'm just saying you could hypothetically do that. So what happens is, is you bid on a draft spot. So say you want Ben or you want the number one pick. Everybody does a bid. And then whoever bids the highest gets that pick. And then it comes to the number two pick, etc. And so you just need to decide you know, how much you want to bid and how you want to allot this, right? Like, do you go after, you know, are you better off like bidding on picks, say 13, 16, 19, and 20, as mm -hmm. opposed to trying to get a top 12 pick? Yeah. You know, or do you go heavy early, you know, and try and get two picks in the top 10 yeah. and then get two picks late? It just, it just depends on your strategy. Okay. So yeah, I think that's interesting. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. I think they're going to try and do a live draft. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, I mean, if, listen, it's all hypothetical right now. There may not ever be a draft. Hype guys are clipping this for sure. Yeah. But it, it may not, if they ever have a draft. Yeah. It, that, that's the plan. Yep. Oh, so, I forgot to bring it up with you. Uh oh, you are not the most influential person in pickleball. Yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised. I would, ne I actually would never guess that I was. And by the way, this show came in number two. Yeah, I mean, YouTube viewers and number of viewers and essentially everything else begs to differ, but 
I mean, it's not surprising if you're going to do an award show on your own platform. You better win <laughs> as the best everything on your own platform. Because if you're not winning it on your platform, yeah, you, you're doing something wrong. Was that doctored? I don't think it was doctored. I just think that if you, again, everybody that is part of their platform, mm -hmm. like Adam Stone, Zane, Pickle Pod, those are the, all the winners. Yeah. So what we're referring to is the Dink. Yeah, the Dink uh, Awards. They, they had a voting contest on a bunch of different categories. Best yeah. player, most improved, best fashion, everything like that. They had yeah. one for best podcast. And I didn't follow along, but Jimmy said that um, yeah, ATC I just saw, came in behind, we lost by 1%, right? 1% or 2%. I just saw it yesterday. I, they, they sent out their newsletter. PicklePod won. Mm -hmm. um, congrats to them. I like PicklePod. I, I've said this before. Like yep. it, it's, a good, it's a good podcast. I think that, that they're good dudes and they're, and they're friends of ours. And, um, and then, yeah, Zane won Most Influential. I think that that good good for Zane. If I, we partnered with them, would we have won it? Yeah, because we're on their platform. Like, you're literally asking people that clearly are on your platform and watch your show mm -hmm. who the best podcast is. Well, where are they even going to get the information to vote? They get it from watching the show. Like, yeah. oh, you guys are doing something. I think we did a reshare maybe one time on our personal. Yeah, I mean, it just it yeah. is what it is. But like, if we said, "Hey guys, what's the best podcast?" and we and we sent it out to KOTC mm -hmm. people that watch. I mean, there's a pretty good chance that KOTC is going to win. Maybe. Like, we have some haters out there. We do, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> if you're sending it out to KOTC viewers, yeah. there's a good chance. But like You're I said, a statistician. Yeah, but, like, Pickle Pod's great. They're, they're good dudes. Like, you know, they, it, I'm not, like, bitter about it. I just think that if, you're, if it's on your platform. A little bit interesting that all their... Yeah, their, if it's on your platform, yeah. though, you better win or you, honestly, or you need to get another job. Yeah. Because... Yeah, the only thing that I found weird was, like, I think 6,000 votes is great, but mm -hmm. don't they have, like, 100,000 subscribers to their newsletter? That's what they claim, and I'm not going to throw any other names out there, but there's a lot of news organizations that claim to have X amount of subscribers or viewers and everything like that, and I'm talking about 200,000 plus. The kitchen? I'm not going to say who. Oh, I thought you were talking but about But whenever these companies or whatever release videos or do content or engagement, if you look at those numbers, they are extremely, extremely yeah. low. I, I don't know how that all works, yeah. but but yeah, yeah. congrats. I mean, I think the Dink Award, dude, it's for fun. Like mm -hmm. you don't get anything. Like you didn't get a trophy or a second place. Or no, like I mean, that. I wish I did. I think second place is the first loser, though. I would never take a second place trophy yeah. ever. Like anyone that uh, maybe in the Olympics. What do you think? Olympics would be good. You'd get a tattoo. If you take top three, you got to get a Bro, tattoo. Bro, if I ever made the Olympics in anything, I would be that dude that gets like the ring tattoo. Yeah. Like on my neck. Yeah. The ring tattoo would be sick. Okay. Um, last sponsor is Paddle Reset. Yes. Resetpickable.shop. They are incredible. They are backed by science. Do you know what the word was that uh, we used last time with them? No. Emulsifier. That's it. Emulsifier. So what this is, is you spray it on your paddle Emulsifier. and it cleans the paddle. It kind of lifts up the residue. All that plastic from the ball kind of gets stuck on that paddle and it lifts it up and then you're able to clean it and wipe it away. Emulsify. That's Emulsify. Right. Yep. Um, super economical. I'm honestly still on my first bottle. I'm down yep. to like one fifth left. No, um, but yeah, it lasts a long time and it will save the integrity of your paddle. It's going to make the grit lasts a lot longer oh, and it's going to do it effectively. Yeah. Um, so make sure to check them out. Uh, it's Paddle Reset is the name and it is resetpickable.shop. Use code KOTC to save a little bit of money. I think the retail on this is like 16 or $17. Yeah, it's a great deal. So save a little bit of money there. Yeah, it's good. And then you have this little microfiber cloth. Yep. Um, by the way, Thank you to all of our sponsors. We have The Pickler, the title yeah. uh, sponsor of the show. We have Pickleball Central. They're on Extra. They're what? You know the show? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Pickler, they talked about The Pickler on Extra. Yeah, that's awesome. Extra, extra. Is that what it, yeah, that's I don't it know. Is. Don't ever do that again. No, Pickleball yeah, Central, Vulcan, uh, C&D Pickleball Nets, and Paddle Reset. Yeah, love it. Thank you, everybody. Reset. We can't do this show without... I mean, we could, but... <laughs> <laughs> the sponsors allow us to do other things. Yes. <laughs> um, also, look for a giveaway. Yeah. 
that we're teaming up with? With the Drew Brees um, video, we got hammered with lighting, which it was kind of hard to control the sun. I guess you can put up uh, deflectors. Yeah. And then B, audio, which the audio was kind of in and out. People are hammering us. Yeah. Look, guys, that was like a dream come true for me. I know. It wasn't for you guys. It was for me. Yeah. Okay? All right. Let's live with it. I got to talk football with Drew Brees. I got to hang out. He invited us to his freaking celebrity event, his yep. charity event. What's it called? I don't know. It's in New Orleans. Super Bowl or Nola Bowl? Oh, yeah, pickleball. pickleball. No, I don't know. Someone else uses pickleball. Yeah. Go check it out. I'm going to be at a convention center, and we might be there doing a live podcast as well. Yeah, he invited us there. I think it's August 7th through 11th. I don't know. But Drew Brees is a stud. I mean, the fact that he's so into pickleball, loves it. I mean, I'm, I'm pumped about it. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank you for tuning in. If you have made it this far, please do us a big favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, and we yep. will see you next week.